Hello, gentlemen. Welcome back to the Manhood Talks. Today's back with you again. Today we return to the subject of identity. How do you figure out who you are? If we're all being remade in God's image and all trying to be more like Jesus, does that mean we're all supposed to be the same? I call this idea cookie cutter Christianity. Say that three times fast. Basically, <laughs> some people seem to think that Christians should all fit into the same mold. Same style, same music, same, you know, whatever. But is this really what God wants? Think about it. God created diversity. Why would his kingdom be monochrome? Why would he make us different just to shove us back into one mold fits all? The Bible describes heaven as a place with people from every tongue, every tribe and every nation. And there's no indication that God removes the glorious cultural diversity that goes with that. Variety is awesome. And blending cultures is one of my favorite things about church. I love meeting people who are very different from me and knowing that they are my family. Why would we erase that? And I'm sorry to say that the Christian church has gotten this wrong too many times. But that verse that says there is no Gentile or Jew, barbarian or Scythian is about removing divisions not removing cultural identity. God's kingdom is like a tapestry. Each individual thread retains the specific beauty that God bestowed it with. And when interwoven and combined with the other threads, it forms a radiant and awe-inspiring picture that no single thread would be able to produce alone. So if uniformity isn't God's plan, then what does it mean that we're all called to be like Jesus, reformed in his image? To find the answer, we turn today to Romans 12. Let's read it at verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That is a powerful verse. And it basically means Jesus died for you. So you live for him. And then check out verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Catch that? God does not want us to conform. That means don't squeeze into a mold. And out in the world, that's basically how most of us try to find our identity. Try on different styles and trends until I find, you know, me. But here's the thing. All of that is trying to find your identity from the outside in. And sometimes we act like the word Christian is just one more label, one more outfit to try on and see if that's me. After all, Christian is a label on Spotify. So maybe that's all it is. Just another label. Listen, Christian is not a genre of music and it's not another label for you to try on and see if it fits. More importantly, trying to be godly from the outside in is a recipe for hypocrisy. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So look back at Romans 12. Do not conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, no cookie cutter. Stop trying to fit into a mold. Don't conform, transform. So what does that mean to transform? Well, it means letting God change you on the inside, renewing your mind and your heart. And just let that work its way out naturally. Your clothes and your hair and your music might be affected, but not to conform to some image. And your style might be hip hop or K-pop or nerd hop, but none of those things define you. Listen, the world will stand up and applaud for you when you break stereotypes. If you're the big kid who quit football to pursue dance or the pretty girl who quit cheer to join a nerd club. Hey, I'm all for that. That's awesome. Break the stereotypes, buck the labels, but don't let the applause fool you into thinking that you found you by trading in one label for another or by switching cookie cutters. That's still not transformation. And don't just be defined as the guy who broke the stereotype. The real you is deeper than any style or clique or reputation. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. You think different, you believe different, you treat people different. You fix your eyes on Jesus, not his style, on his character, his compassion. 
And what does that look like? Read the rest of Romans 12. It's awesome. It starts with the honest look at yourself. Sober judgment. Recognize that God gives each of us our gifts, not to make one better than another, but so we can serve each other. And in verse nine, love sincerely, be genuine, hate evil, cling to good, honor others above yourself, be joyful, patient, faithful, share and show hospitality, bless people who are terrible to you, associate with lowly people, no arrogance, don't repay evil for evil, overcome evil with good, live at peace, love your enemy. Seriously, this chapter describes an insanely awesome way to live. And you cannot make that happen from the outside in. It only works by transformation. Let God renew your mind. And you know what living like that means? It means no shame. Just like the garden. Only now we are not naked. <laughs> Thankfully. Romans 10 says anyone who believe in Jesus will never be put to shame. God's plan for us is restoration. Back to the place where we can stand firm in our identity, where nothing can put us to shame. It's important to clarify here. God's plan is a life of no shame, but that does not mean you can do bad things and not feel ashamed about it. It means you stop doing bad. It means God forgives you for your past and heals your future. So you have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> Read Romans 12. I love this chapter. And in your journal, I want you to write down again your identity. Only this time, no three columns. Who cares how others see you? This time, just write down how God sees you in his son, Christ. Write things like son, worth dying for, forgiven, eternal. And write the stuff that's personal to just you as well. And whatever you write, when it's all done, you write these words. Righteous in God's sight. No more shame. And remember, tomorrow is the group meeting, and we'll see you there. Join us next time as we continue the journey one chapter at a time. And remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word.